We offer our condolences to the Imam of our time, Imam Sahib al Asli wa Zaman. And to all the Mu'mineen and Mu'minat on this occasion of the Shahada. Before I make my presentation this after this evening, I wish to request us all to recite five times Amr Najib for the people who have given me the responsibility to pray for them and to pray for the loved ones who are unwell and people who are in difficulties. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala grant them ease. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala grant a quick recovery to all those who are unwell. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our marhumeen. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fulfill the desires of all those who have legitimate desires in their hearts. On this Thursday and blessed night, let us recite five times on the Yujib for the Shifa and the ease of the problems for the Mu'mini. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Amma Yujib al-Muqtafa ila da'ahu wa yakshifu al-Suh. أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء 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 And may I also request us to recite Surah Al-Fatiha once and three times Surah Al-Ikhlas for the Isani Tawab of the Makuma who left us last week and was buried on Monday. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawmuddin, Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'in. إلى الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد 
لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا احد اللهم ان كانت محسنه فزد في احسانها وان كانت مسيئه فتجاوز عنها واغفر لها اللهم اجعلها عندك في اعلى عليين واخلف على اهلها في الغابرين وارحمها برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين صلوا على محمد the occasion of the wafat and the shahadat of our sixth Imam alayhi salatu wasalam allow me to elaborate one or two things in English and then we take a lesson from the life of Imam alayhi salatu wasalam and speak and discuss some of the teachings that Imam alayhi salam has taught us. Bismillah. <laughs> Imam was born in Madinatul Munawwara on the 17th of Rabi'ul Awwal uh, 80 or 83 after Hijrah. Uh, so there is a discrepancy as far as the date of the year is concerned. And therefore, it was either 80 or 83 after Hijrah when the birth of Imam alayhi salam took place. The martyrdom of our sixth Imam alayhi salam took place in Medina on either the 15th or the 25th of Shawwal based on various narrations, 148 after Hijrah. And the period of the imamat of our sixth Imam alayhi salatu so the age was 60 to 60, 63, between 63 and 66 years. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him that particular life based on which date we follow of his birth. So he was either 60 or 60 to 63. And the period of his imamat was between 34 and 35 years. The period of imamat itself is one of the most important parts and aspects of the life of our sixth Imam, Imam Ja'far al-Sadir, salawatullahi wa sallam. His father was the fifth Imam of the Shia Ummah, the Imam who is known as Imam Muhammad al-Baqi, salawatullahi wa sallam. His mother was known as Um Farwa, who was the daughter of Qasim, uh, who was also the son of Muhammad ibn Abu Bakr. So the daughter of Imam Ali, the wife of Imam Ali Salam was known as Um Farwa. One of the distinct identity of the Shia community, as far as the Shia community is concerned, is the fact that we are known with certain names. We are identified by certain names. One of the names that is given to us is Shia of Ali ibn Abi Talib. We are known to the entire world as the Shia of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Another name that is given in the scholarship and the academic understandings within the books is known as the community which is known as Imamiya community. The community that, that believes in Imams that subscribes to the concept of Imama. Another name that is given to us is Ithna Ashariya, all the people who are Twelvers or believe in Twelve Imams. And one of the names which is given to us is those who, people who are known as Ja'fariya. And this last name known as Ja'fariya is directly attributed to our sixth Imam, Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq, salawatullahi wa The idea and the concept of Imamat and the, what, the reason for which we are known as the Ja'fari is because of the contributions of our sixth Imam alayhi salam, as far as the entire Ummah is concerned. The contributions that he made, the efforts that he took, the establishment of the school of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, or the Ja'fari school of thought, the high caliber students of profundity of thoughts within them came from the school of Imam Ja'far Sadiq and therefore 
this community is known as Jafari, and we, as the members of this community, are proud to be called Jafari because of the contributions that were made by the Imam. At the same time, the reason all these names have been given to us is because of the purity of the Imams that we believe in. Is because of the knowledge that our Imam possessed. It is because of the qualities that they had within them. It is because of the characteristics they displayed to the world. It is because of the knowledge that they gave to the people that even today philosophers are struggling to understand. And therefore, you will see that the Shia community, when it has believed in an Imam, it has followed certain stringent conditions to accept somebody to be an Imam. Not any Tom, Dick or Harry can claim Imam. Not any individual can be called an Imam. When it comes to the Shia community, the Shia community has been extremely stringent in how it has accepted an Imam. One of the conditions of following an Imam and the characteristics that the Imam must possess within himself is the characteristic of ilm and knowledge. If there was anyone who was asked a question and he scratched his head, know that he is not an Imam. If there was anyone who was asked a question and was unable or stumbled, know that he was not an Imam. If there was someone who said, had it not been for two years, I would have died, then know that that person cannot be an Imam. conditions has been the condition of ilm and knowledge and knowledge not an ordinary knowledge a knowledge which is divine knowledge there is no teacher to these individuals the teacher of these individuals in that is none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and therefore the knowledge that they give the wisdom that they display the idea that they present before each and every one of us is so universal can that it cannot be challenged by anyone. That is a condition of the Imam. If an Imam was not found to be in that state of ilm and knowledge, then know that that man or whoever made the claim was not an Imam and cannot be an Imam. And therefore the Shia community has only accepted Imams who through Nas have been approved to be Imam from divine and have been tested by the people to have those qualities of Imam within them. In the madrasa of the Imam السلام, uh, one of the beautiful things that happened was that during the time of the Imam, the political condition of uh, the, that, that geographical area within the Muslim Ummah was that Banu Umayyah and Banu Abbas was struggling and there was a power struggle between them which gave Imam an opportunity to establish and flourish the school of al Bayt of ilm through ilm. The member upon which the Imam used to sit had a poem written behind in that particular member. And the poet is so, poem is so beautiful. The poem says, لَيْسَ الْيَتِيمَ الَّذِي قَدْ مَاتَ وَالِدَهُ I will translate it in a moment, but let me elaborate on it. Who do we call yatim? Yatim is one who has lost his father. Yatim is a child who is fatherless child. He is known generally, he is known as someone who is yatim. Or sometimes a child that has lost or is orphaned, has no father or no mother, is also called a yatim. So now listen to the poem. The poem says, "Leisa yatim alladhi qad ma tawalidahu." Do not consider one whose parents are no more. Do not consider the child who is orphaned to be a yatim. Imam says. Yeah. Oh, sorry. The poem says, not the imam. The poem says, do not consider a child who is an orphan to be a child who is yatim. 
إن اليتيم يتيم العلم والأدب. A true يتيم is he who is void of knowledge and good attitude. The emphasis of knowledge that Imam Ali Salatu Wassalam used to give. This reminds me of 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 a couple of verses of the Quran. And when I had read it in my student days, I was so mesmerized. By how the knowledge of the Imams Ali Musallam was, was, and how we as individuals can even comprehend the level and the profundity of the thoughts of our Imams. In Surah Al-Kahf, there is a beautiful story regarding Musa Ali Salatu Wassalam. Nabi Musa is Ulul Azm. Nabi Musa is Sahib Sharia. Nabi Musa is one of the top four prophets. Nabi Musa, I do not think there is any other prophet mentioned more in Quran than Musa. <laughs> Musa is Kalimullah. Musa speaks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, having known these qualities of Musa, observe these verses of the Quran. Allah Majlis says that there was an occasion when Musa السلام, when he knew that he was knowledgeable, when he was you that he knew that he was unmatched, and he knew that there was none who could equal him. At one stage of his life, a thought came to Musa السلام, and the thought was, Alhamdulillah, Allah has given me everything, and Allah has made me a man of knowledge. It was a thought that crossed the mind of Musa. Immediately Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends Jibreel and asks Jibreel to tell Musa, Oh Musa, I want you to go and acquire further knowledge. Subhanallah. Allah. Allahu Akbar. I mean, this is this is Ulul Azm, this is Kalimullah, this is the only Prophet who we know mentioned in Quran who used to speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Kohitu. Right? He is being told as a prophet, as Ulul Azm, as Sahib al Sharia, one who holds the book, he is being told, go and acquire knowledge. Musa realizes immediately that the thought that crossed his mind that he was a knowledgeable individual was a wrong thought process. Allah did not like it. And therefore, Allah has sent him to acquire further knowledge. So Musa alayhi salam, now the verses of the Quran in Surah Gahaf says, Musa together with his companion says, La abrahu hatta abluha majma'a al-bahrain am amdiya hukuba. Musa now decides and has made an intention that he's going to acquire knowledge. So Musa now says, I will now leave this city and go in my quest for acquiring knowledge until I reach a place where two oceans meet, even if it takes me centuries to get there. So Musa is now committed that he wants to go and acquire knowledge because Allah has told him to go and acquire further knowledge. So he says, I will now go and I will go to that place, a place where two oceans meet. And in that place, I will acquire knowledge. And to reach that place, if it is going to take me centuries, I will not stop until I get to that place. Now Musa begins his journey. He goes together with his companion. Him and his companions. There are names that are being given to these companions. Let me just call him a companion of Musa. So Musa and his companion, they leave. When they go, When they departed the city, they took together with them some food, means for them to travel. They decided to carry some food, and this food was apparently a fish. And they wanted to take this fish so that when they are hungry, they can eat this fish. So they moved on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, When they reached that place where two oceans meet, they forgot about their fish. 
Something wonderful happened. The fish that they had taken for lunch became alive and jumped into the water. Uh, this is Quran, this is not my words. Just in case somebody is doubting this. These are the words of Quran. They forgot about their fish. When they forgot about their fish, <coughs> something wonderful happened. That fish became alive and jumped into the ocean. The companion of Musa saw this. Musa did not realize this. They waited for a while, they paused there, and after that they don't realize that they have already reached a place where Musa is supposed to acquire knowledge. They moved on. They rested for a while, they moved on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَلَمَّا جَعْوَزَ When they moved away from that place, Musa says to his young companion, he says to him, Oh my companion, آتِنَا غَدَاءَنَا لَقَدْ لَقِينَا مِنْ سَفَرِنَا هَذَا نَصَبَا Can you bring me my lunch? Because this journey has really tired me. Now the companion is perplexed. He does not know what to do. So he tells Musa, he says, Oh Musa, أَرَأَيْتَ إِذْ آوَيْنَا إِلَى الصَّخْرَ do you remember when we reached that particular place where there was a rock? I forgot about the fish. Something wonderful happened. This fish that we had brought became alive and jumped into the ocean. Shaitan forgot, made me forget to mention it to you. Otherwise, I would have. Mention this to you. Musa says, Oh my God. That is the place we wanted to go. That was the place where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had sent me. Allah, if you understand the Arabic language, Allah, you will enjoy how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is using this beautiful word. Allah says, these people, Musa and his companion, they both followed their own footsteps backwards to that particular place where they were supposed to be. When they reached that place, they found a man from amongst our slaves. He was not an ordinary man. He was a man who we have given our mercy and we have taught him from the knowledge of ours. According to Mufassirin, that was Khizr Now, observe this. Musa Ulul Azm. Musa, a prophet. Musa, one of the top prophets. Musa Kayyimullah comes there and realizes that he has to acquire knowledge from someone who we ordinarily would feel is inferior in knowledge than Musa. He comes to him and he says, هل أتبعك على أن تعلمني مما علمت رشدا? May I follow you please so that you may teach me that which you have been taught? Musa is now begging Khizr. May I follow you, that you may teach me what you have been taught by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Khizr says, of course. <laughs> Board this boat that we have. This is a beautiful story. I will stop here, then you can read more. That will be more interesting for you. <laughs> Instead of me mentioning it, it will give me the thawab of you reciting Quran. <laughs> Inshallah. <laughs> so here, they board a boat. Musa is in a boat. And Khizr is in a boat. Allah Almighty says, Musa sat like a student would sit. Khizr sat like a teacher would sit. <laughs> they now sailed. As they moved out, they were somewhere in the middle of the ocean when a bird appeared in the sky. And it took a dip into the ocean and carried some water in its beak. Khizr says to Musa, you want to learn, right? Musa says, yes. Khizr says, what did you just observe? 
Musa says, I observed a bird, dipped its beak in the water, carried some water in its beak. Khizr says, well done, that was a good observation. But Musa, I want you to know that your knowledge, my knowledge, the knowledge of all the man in this universe and the jinn and the ins put together cannot be compared to the ilm of Ahlul Bayt <laughs> taken in its beak is the knowledge that the entire universe has in comparison to the ocean that the Ahlul Bayt One of the conditions of the Imam is that he has to be Sahibul Ilm. He has to be one who has knowledge, one who does not scratch his head when he is asked a perplexed, perplexed question. One who responds and responds confidently. Saluni, one who puts a challenge before you. What question? Ask me what you want to ask. Fa'inni a'lam bi turqi samai min turqi al-ar. Because the knowledge of the heavens more than the knowledge of the earth. The Shia community has not only accepted an Imam that we are just accepting an Imam. No, the Shia community has followed stringent conditions to accept an Imam. When they found that there was none like him, they accepted. Otherwise, many people claim Imam, and many will claim afterwards. The second condition of accepting the Imam is that he must be Sahibul Ijaz, that he must possess within him a Quran, that he must have within him the power of miracle, one who can verify the claim that he is making is known as an imam. If somebody who says I am an imam and if you ask him a question he is not able to answer or he cannot prove any supernatural thing for you, then know that he cannot have the quality of the imam. That reminds me in Masjid al Kufa once, um, uh, the mosque is full. Amir al Minin is sitting on his pulpit and making a claim, Saluni tabla an tafkiru. Ask me a question before you lose me. Any question that you may have. It is unfortunate. It is really unfortunate that the people who sat down by the feet of Amir al were asking simplistic questions to the man who had answers to the most complicated issues. People were asking, how many hair does my child have? Those were the questions that people are asking. That's why Imam Ali used to hold on his chest and say, there is no one to take from here. Ali feels lonely about himself. He should be sahibul ijaz, someone who has the power of showing and displaying a miracle to prove his imam. Imam says, Saluni tabla an tafkiduni, the mosque is full. The entire mosque of Kufa is absolutely full. A man right at the end of Masjid al Kufa raises his hand and says, I have a question, Ya Amir al Mu'minin, Ya Ali. He says, Tell me what is your question. He says, Aina Jibreel. Can you tell me where is Jibreel now? <laughs> Amir al Mu'minin is sitting on his pulpit. Where is Jibreel now? Ali ibn Abi Talib looks down, looks on the left, looks on the right, looks towards the earth, looks towards the earth, looks at that man and says, Anta Jibreel, you are Jibreel. The mosque of Kufa is a witness that the one who questioned disappeared from amongst the people. The companions say to Imam Ali, they say, Ya Ali, how did you know he was Jibreel? Observe the answer. How did you know he was Jibreel? He says, I looked towards my left, he was not there. I looked towards my right, I could not see him. I looked above towards the heavens, I couldn't find him. I looked towards the earth, I could not see him. I realized it was him who was Jibreel. 
Amen says, Ya Ali, tell me, you see so much everywhere in every direction. Ali says, what you see in the palm of your hands, Ali sees the entire universe. He has to be Sahibul Ijaz, someone who has a miracle within him. Only then you accept him to be. The third condition, I will not have time for every condition, but the third condition for the Shia community to have accepted an Imam, and this is one of the most beautiful conditions, and if I begin to elaborate on it, I will not be able to complete. And therefore, I'm just passing about it. That he has to be a ma'soom. Now here we will open a Pandora's box. If we begin to look at the claim of the people who claim leadership. That the Imam has to be a ma'soom. He cannot be someone who can commit a mistake or an error. He has to be infallible. He has to fall within the category of Innama. All the doors in the mosque of Medina were closed except the door of Ali. That shows you what Taharat means. If we only look from the perspective of jurisprudence and fiqh, you cannot enter a mosque if you are in a state of najasat. All the doors closed. Ya Ali, keep yours open. Why? Because your purity is unquestionable purity. Your isma is unquestionable isma. And therefore the third condition is that the Imam has to be a ma'soom to be accepted as an Imam. The fourth condition is that he has to be creative. He cannot be someone who looks for ideas elsewhere. His ideas are inspired by debate. When he responds to the question, he responds creatively. When he asks a question, he asks creatively. When he gives a solution to the problem, he gives it creatively. And there has to be creativity in him for anyone to be able to accept him as an Imam. And therefore, my fellow brothers and sisters, Imam Ja'far al-Salih, salawatullahi wa At 4,000 students, at one time, in Medina to Munawwara, were they all Muslims? No. Was it all real religious questions? No. No, no. Imam salam was teaching people, discussing ilm with people, telling people, showing people paths, and telling them what the true answer to the questions were. Philosophy was discussed. Astronomy was discussed. Chemistry was discussed. Complex issues of Tawheed. Atheists used to come and sit before the Imam. No, agnostics used to come and sit with the Imam. Everyone sat and everyone received the response after which they did not have a question. From the sixth Imam, Imam Ja'far al-Sajid, salawatullahi wa sallam. Founders of Maliki and Hanafi schools. The source of their knowledge is none but Sadiq Ali Muhammad Imam Ja'far Sadiq Salawatullahi wa salamu And that is when what I mentioned earlier is mentioned by a great Imam of the Muslim Ummah within the Muslim Ummah who is considered to be Imam Azam. He says, Lawla Sanatan. Had it not been for the two years I had spent under the feet of a sahib, I would have perished. And therefore, my fellow brothers, Imam Jafar Sadiq, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi, 
as an imam from home, we must learn lessons and find ourselves in a position where we ourselves follow our imam alayhi salatu wasalam by learning from imam alayhi salam and the teachings of imam. One of the lessons that I would like to go on, I mean, we could go on discussing imam alayhi salatu wasalam for a long time. Let us leave that for another time, inshaAllah ta'ala. But let us take one or two lessons that we can apply to our lives. In the hadith of Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq, salawatullahi wa salam wa alayhi. Well, Imam says, Afdalul a'mal, the best of the a'mal. Now, this is coming from the Salih of Ali Muhammad. He says, the best of the a'mal is what? As-salatu li waqtiha. The best of the a'mal. He mentions three best a'mal. The first best a'mal is to pray your salat on time. What that will give you, only you can experience. Nobody will be able to tell you what the Salat on time gives you. But you can only experience the Mi'raj of Salat when you pray the Salat on time. So Imam Ali Salam says, Afdalul A'mal, as Salatu li waqtiha, that Namaz should be prayed on time. Wa birrul walidain. Next best a'mal, or one of the best a'mal is honoring and obedience to the commands of your parents. <laughs> and the third one, al-jihad fi sabilillah. And the third one is jihad in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are afdalul a'mal. They are the best of the a'mal. And it is no wonder that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quran says, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّا Your Lord has decreed that you shall worship none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Quran says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ Your Lord has decreed أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّا That you shall worship none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Immediately after talking about worshipping Him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا And you will be kind to your parents. Greatest ni'ma and blessing for you and I is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the facilitation of being the children of our parents. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself in Quran makes this emphasis of what their status and their position is. You will be kind to your parents. No. In your life, if your one parent or either one of your parents become old, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Either one of them or both of them become old, Allah says, فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا don't utter a word like oof before your parents. Imam Jafar Sadiq was asking Ibn Rasulullah, what does oof mean? Huh? What does oof mean? How Imam explains this? And then I will try to paraphrase it. Imam says, if there was a shorter letter than oof, Allah would have used it. If there was anything shorter than oof, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have used it. You know, in my language, in my crooked and very shallow understanding, I consider oof to be ah. Allah says, فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا oof. Do not utter a word like oof before your parents. وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا do not speak to them harshly. Yeah. وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا 
and speak to them politely and with sweetness. No. Allah says, no, no, this is not enough. When you approach your parents, you bow your shoulders down in humility before your parents. And then say, Oh Lord, have mercy on my parents the way they had mercy on me when I was a child. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quran. And say, my Lord, have mercy upon them the way they had mercy on me when I was a child. How can I thank Allah for the blessing of the parents? Compassion hai ye subject. Main isko baar baar praha karta hu. Imam alayhi salatu wasalam chauthe imam farmate hai jahan tak tumhari walid ka haq hai. Jahan tak tumhari walid ka haq hai tumhari upad. As far as your father's right is concerned over you. Imam farmate hai fa an ta'lama is baat ko yaad rakna. Hamesha yaad rakna. Ke uska haq hai tumhari baap ka ye haq hai an ta'lama. أَنَّهُ أَصْلُكْ وَإِنَّكَ فَرْحُكُ کہ وہ تمہارا اصل ہے اور تم اس کا حصہ اور کچھ نہیں وہ تمہارا اصل ہے وہ اصل نعمت ہے تم اس کا حصہ اس کے امام میں بہت خصورت بات بتا دیں وَمَهْمَا تَرَا فِي نَفْسِكَ شَيْئًا يُعْجِبُكَ اگر تم تمہاری زندگی میں ایسے مقام پہ پہنچ جاؤ ایسے مرحلے پہ پہنچ جاؤ کسی ایسے مقام پہ پہنچو کہ تمہیں تمہارے اندر کوئی چیز اچھی نظر آنے لگے تم اپنے آپ کو پسند کرنے لگو تمہارے اندر کوئی ایسی اچھائی آ جائے جسے تم خود پسند کرو تم نے کچھ حاصل کر دیا تم اپنے آپ کو اپریشیئٹ کرنے لگو جب ایسا کوئی وقت آئے امام فرماتے ہیں فَعَلَمْ اس وقت یاد رکھنا اِنَّ عَبَاكَ أَصْلُكْ تمہارا باپ تمہارا اصل ہے لَوْ لَاهُ لَمْ تَكُنْ وہ نہ ہوتا تو تم نہ ہوتا سبحان اللہ اس بات کو یاد رکھنا اگر وہ نہ ہوتا تو تم نہ ہوتے فَإِنَّهُ أَصْلُ النِّعْمَةِ وہ اصل نعمت ہے امام فرماتے وَحْمَدِ اللَّهِ اللہ کی حمد کرو اور اس کا شکریہ ادا کرو کہ اس نے ماں باپ کا سایہ تمہارے لئے رکھا ہے وقت نہیں ہے وہ شاعر ہے میں نے یوٹیوب میں کسی نے بھیجا تھا واتس ایپ کے اندر میں نے اس کو دیکھا تھا سیف کر لیا تھا کچھ اشعار ہیں باپ کے حوالے سے شاید آپ نے سنے ہوں گے شاید اگر شاید کہتا ہے کہ عزیز تر مجھے رکھتا ہے وہ رگے جہاں سے ہیں میرا باپ عزیز تر مجھے رکھتا ہے وہ رگے جہاں سے ہیں یہ بات سچ ہے میرا باپ کم نہیں ماں سے یہ بات سچ ہے میرا باپ کم نہیں ماں سے وہ ماں کے کہنے پہ کچھ روب مجھ پہ رکھتا ہے وہ ماں کے کہنے پہ کچھ روب مجھ پہ رکھتا ہے یہی وجہ ہے مجھے چونتے جھجکتا ہے وہ آشنا میرے ہر کرب سے رہے ہر دم وہ کھل کے رو نہیں پاتا مگر سی سکتا ہے وہ کھل کے رو نہیں پاتا مگر سی سکتا ہے جڑی ہے اس کی ہر ایک ہاں فقط میری ہاں سے جڑی ہے اس کی ہر ایک ہاں فقط میری ہاں سے یہ بات سچ ہے میرا باپ کم نہیں ماں سے ہر ایک درد وہ چپ چاپ خود پہ سہتا ہے تمام عمر وہ اپنوں سے کٹ کے رہتا ہے وہ لوٹتا ہے کہیں رات دیر کو دن بھر وجود اس کا پسینے میں دھل کے رہتا ہے گلے ہیں پھر بھی مجھے ایسے چاک داما سے 
ये बात सच है मेरा बाप कम नहीं माँ से पुराना सूट पहनता है कम वो खाता है मेरा बाप पुराना सूट पहनता है कम वो खाता है मगर खिलौने मेरे सब खरीद लाता है पुराना सूट पहनता है कम वो खाता है मगर खिलौने मेरे सब खरीद लाता है वो मुझके वो मुझको सोते हुए देखता है जी भर के न जाने सोच के वो क्या क्या मुस्कुराता है मेरे बगैर है सब खाब उसके वीरा से ये बात सच है मेरा बाप कम नहीं माँ से इमाम फरमाते उसका हक है तुम्हारे बाप का हक है कि तुम इस बात को रियलाइज करो कि वो असल नेमत है अगर तुम इस दुनिया के अंदर किसी भी मकाम पे पहुंचे उसी वक्त अल्लाह के हम करो शुक्रिया अदा करो और ये जानो कि लव ना हो लम तक वो ना होता तो तुम ना होते और जहां तक माँ का ताल्लुक है इमाम चौथे इमाम फरमाते हैं फहक उम्मिक तुम्हारी माँ का हक ये है कि तुम इस बात को जानो इस बात को रियलाइज करो तुम्हारी मां का हक ये है सुनिए गए जुमले इमाम के तुम्हारी मां का हक ये है कि उसने तुम्हें ऐसे गोद में उठाया है जैसे कोई किसी को नहीं उठाता इस बात को याद रखो इमाम कहते हैं अन्ना हमलत का बिन अहदुन अहदा उसने तुम्हें ऐसे उठाया है जैसे कोई किसी को नहीं उठाता वह अब तमत का बिन समरतीहादुन अहदा उसने अपने कलेजे के टुकड़ों से तुम्हें वो खिलाया है जो कोई किसी को नहीं खिलाता इमाम फरमा उसने अपने कलेजे के टुकड़े से तुम्हें वो खिलाया है जो कोई किसी को नहीं खिलाया खिलाता वो वक्त कभी जमी जवारी तुम्हारी माँ का हक है कि तुम इस बात को जानो कि उसने अपने पूरे जवार से तुम्हारी हिफाजत की है तुम्हें प्रोटेक्ट किया है तुम्हारी माँ ने अब सुनिए इमाम कहते हैं वलम तुम्हारी उसने ये परवाह नहीं की कि वो भूखी रहे सिर्फ इसलिए कि तुम खा लो इमाम फरमाते उसने ये परवाह नहीं की कि वो भूखी रहे मगर तुम खा लो वो तारा वो तक सूख उसने ये परवाह नहीं की कि वो उरियान रहे मगर ये कि तुम कपड़ा पहन लो ये तुम्हारी माँ का हक है कि तुम इस बात को जानो वो तब हा दिल लो और तुम्हारी मां का हक यह है कि तुम इस बात को जानो तुम इस बात को जानो कि उसने ये सूरज में रहना कड़कती धूप में रहना गवारा किया और ये परवाह नहीं की कि धूप कड़क रहा है मगर ये कि तुम साए गए फिर मां फरमाते हैं वह चह जू नौ मली अचल उसने अपनी नींद की परवाह नहीं की सिर्फ इसलिए कि तुम सो जाओ इमाम फरमाते हैं वो वक्त कल हर बर उसने गर्मी से भी तुम्हें बचाया उसने सर्दी से भी से भी तुम्हें बचाया लिटकून लहा ताकि तुम उसके लाल रहो ताकि तुम उसके कलेजे के पास रहो मुनवर राना एक शायर है कॉन्टेम्प्रेरी शायर मैं दो जुमलों में उन्होंने एक अजीब गरीब बात कही है मुनवर राना साहब ने कहते हैं ये ऐसा कर्ज है जो मैं अदा कर ही नहीं सकता ये जो मां ने उन्हें पाला है मुनवर राना साहब कहते हैं ये ऐसा कर्ज है जो मैं अदा कर ही नहीं सकता क्यों मैं जब तक घर ना लौटू मेरी मां सजने में रहती मैं जब तक घर न लौटू मेरी माँ सजने में कैसे शुक्रिया अदा करेंगे माँ का बाप का कैसे शुक्रिया अदा करेंगे क्या नहीं किया उन्होंने उनका हक है कि हम आप इस बात को जाने 
کہ وہ کون ہے پھر امام کا عجیب و غریب بات فرماتے ہیں فرماتے ہیں وَإِنَّكَ لَا تُطِيقُ شُكْرَهَا ناممکن ہے کہ تم تمہاری ماں کا شکریہ ادا کر سکتے ہیں ناممکن ہے کہ تم تمہاری ماں کا شکریہ ادا کیسے شکریہ ادا کرو گے جناب موسیٰ علیہ السلام کو خدا نے کوہ تور پہ بلایا جناب موسیٰ کی ماں زندہ تھی ہے جب جناب موسیٰ کوہ تور پہ پہنچے ہیں تو پیچھے سے خدا ون دے تعالی نے جناب موسیٰ کی ماں کو دنیا سے اٹھا لیا جب جناب موسیٰ کوہ تور پہ آئے ہیں تو اللہ نے موسیٰ کو خبر دی موسیٰ تم یہاں آ رہے تھے ہم نے پیچھے تمہاری ماں کو دنیا سے اٹھا لیا موسیٰ رونے لگے گر گرانے لگے گریہ کرنے لگے کوہ تور پہ اتنا گریہ کرنے لگے خدا نے فرمایا موسیٰ رو رونا حق ہے اس لیے کہ وہ رات وہ ماں جو راتوں کو تلات کی تاریخی میں اٹھ اٹھ کے تمہارے لئے دعا کرتی تھی موسیٰ اب وہ ماں دنیا میں نہیں ہے موسیٰ اب سمل کے چلنا رو موسیٰ رو ان سورے خلق و محبت سے ہے خلقت ماں کی بیان بات نہیں کہتے ہیں ہے محبت جو کوئی شہ تو محبت ماں کی زندگی دیتی ہے انسان کو شفقت ماں کی باپ سے بڑھ کے ہے دنیا کو ضرورت ماں کی عزیز عیسیٰ کو ملی باپ کے احسا کے بغیر دہر میں کوئی بھی پیدا نہ ہوا ماں کے بغیر مشکلیں سہ کے ہمیں در سے وفا دیتی ہیں شب کے سناتے میں اٹھ اٹھ کے دعا دیتی ہے خون دل اپنا یہ حسس کے پلا دیتی ہے گوشت کے ٹکڑوں کو یہ انسان بنا دیتی ہے مانتا ماں کی وہ دولت ہے جو گھٹتی ہی نہیں باپ تھک جاتا ہے ماں پیار سے تھکتی ہی نہیں بچہ ہستا ہے تو اس کو بھی قرار آتا ہے زب جو کرتا ہے تو پیغام بہار آتا ہے غصہ آتا ہے نہ چہرے پہ غبار آتا ہے ماں کو بچے کی شرارت پہ بھی پیار آتا ہے یاس منتا کی خود اللہ بھی فرماتا ہے وعدہ ماں کرتی ہے جنت سے لباس آتا ہے وعدہ ماں کرتی ہے جنت سے نباس آتا ہے ماں کی لیے اور باپ کے لیے اپنی ان کی خود کی اولاد سے زیادہ خوبصورت کوئی اولاد ہوئی نہیں چاہے پڑوسی کی اولاد پڑوسی یہ سمجھے کہ آپ کی اولاد بدشکل ہے ماں کی آنکھوں کے لیے میرے جیسی خوبصورت اولاد دنیا میں کہنے لیے کیا نہیں کرتی ماں ہر شئے کرتی ہے بچہ گر جاتا ہے تو سسک سسک کی روتی ہے بخار ہوتا ہے تو رات بھر سوتی نہیں دن بھر پریشان رہتی ہے یہ صرف بیماری بچہ گھر سے باہر جاتا ہے یہی کہتے ہیں منور رانہ صاحب کہ میں جب تک گھر نہ لوٹوں میری ماں سجدے میں رہتی ہے کیا کہتی ہے سجدے میں خدا سے پالنے والے میرا بچہ خیر و حافیت سے واپس آ جائے یہی دعا ہوتی ہے نا ماں کی میرے بچے کو سلامت رکھ میرے بچے کو حافیت دے میرے بچے کو میری عمر لگ جائے یہی دعا کرتی ہے نا ماں مجھے تصور کر کے بتائیے کہ جب علی اکبر رباب جب علی اکبر میں لیلہ کے پاس آئے اور اجازت طلب کی کہ میں مقتل میں جا رہا ہوں تو لیلہ میں کیسے اجازت ہوں نہیں تصور کیجئے تاثر کا پامان لاشا فرمان کیسے دیکھا تصور کیجئے کہ رباب نے اثر کا منگہ دھرا ہوا کیسے دیکھا تصور کیجئے حسین نے رباب کے ساتھ اثر کو کیسے دفن کیا آج سے دوستو وفات امام جعفر صادق علیہ السلام کی شب شہادت ہے یا شہادت کا دن ہے شب شہادت ہے خدا ہم آپ کو کسی غم میں نہ رولائے سوائے غم حسین کے لئے 
مسائل میں ملتا ہے شہادت امام جعفر صادق علیہ صلاحت والسلام کے ایک مرتبہ چھٹے امام بیٹھے ہوئے تھے پہلی محرم کا چاند نمودار ہوا تھا امام گریہ فرما رہے تھے امام گریہ فرما رہے تھے منصور دوانتی نے ایک مرتبہ حکم دیا تھا کہ امام کا گھر چلایا جائے امام کے گھر کو آگ لگائی امام گھر سے اپنے ہجرے سے باہر نکلے زاگرین کہتے ہیں اور تاریخ میں ملتا ہے کہ جب گھر سے باہر آئے امام تو ایک مرتبہ باہر بالکل باہر نہیں گئے گھر کے سہن کے اندر کھڑے ہیں اور ایک کونے میں جا کے رونے لگے امام سے پوچھا گیا کچھ خدام تھے خدمت گزار تھے جو چاہت کو بجا رہے تھے ایک نے دیکھا کہ امام باہر نہیں نکل رہے آکے امام کے پاس بیٹھ کے پوچھنے لگا مولا کیا بات ہے آپ کیوں گریہ فرما رہے ہیں فرمایا فرمایا اس جلتی ہوئے آگ نے شام جریبہ کی یاد کرا اس جلتی ہوئے آگ نے شام جریبہ یاد کرا دی یہ پہلی مرتبہ نہیں تھا کسی امام کے گھر کو آگ لگائی گئی امام کی دادی کے گھر پہ آگ لگائی گئی نامو سے مصطفیٰ کے خیموں میں آگ لگائی گئی امام سازد کے گھر میں آگ لگائی گئی تاریخ سے ملتا ہے عشور کا دن تھا اور امام علیہ السلام گریہ فرما رہے تھے اتنے میں ایک منشید آیا منشید اس کو کہتے ہیں جو مرسیہ گو نہیں یعنی مرسیہ گو ہوتا ہے مرسیہ لکھنے والا نہیں بلکہ پڑھنے والا جسے کہا جائے اسے منشید کہتے ہیں عربی زبان میں ایک مرتبہ آیا آشور کا دن تھا پہلی محرم کا دن تھا امام نے بلایا منشید سے کہا کوئی نیا کلام ہے کہا میں خود اپنا کلام میرے پاس نہیں ہے میں کوئی اپنا کلام نہیں کہتا مگر کسی کا لکھا ہوا کلام پڑھ سکتا ہوں فرمایا پڑھو محرم آ گئی محرم کا پہلا دن ہے منشید نے ممبر کے اوپر ایک ممبر رکھا منشید ممبر کے اوپر آئے امام نے کہا رک جاؤ امام نے فرمایا رک جاؤ فرمایا کیوں کہا ایک مرتبہ رک جاؤ خدام کو بلا کے کہا پردے کا احتمام کرو پردے کا احتمام ہوا منشید کہتا ہے میں نے اس وقت یہ تصور کیا یہ سوچا کہ شاید گھرانے مصطفیٰ کی بی بیاں اس پردے کے پیچھے آنے والی ہے اس طرح نامو سے مصطفیٰ اور نبی زادیاں اور سید زادیاں پردے کے پیچھے آئیں امام نے کہا آپ مرسیہ شروع کرو میں نے مرسیہ پڑھنا شروع کیا امام کی حالت میں نے دیکھی دار و قطار گریہ فرما رہے تھے امام گریہ فرما رہے تھے ایک مرتبہ میں نے چاہا کہ میں رک جاؤں کیونکہ امام کی حالت مجھ سے نہیں دیکھی جا رہی تھی فرمایا فرمایا ایک مرتبہ امام نے اپنے سر کو اٹھایا اور کہا رکنا نہیں مرسیہ پڑھتے ہیں میرے جد کا مرسیہ پڑھتے رہو میرے جد کا مرسیہ پڑھتے رہو میں پڑھتا رہا یہاں تک کہ بی بیوں کی آواز بڑھا یہاں تک کہ بی بیوں کی آواز بلد ہوئی ایک مرتبہ میں رک گیا امام نے فرمایا کیوں رک گیا فرمایا منشید نے بی بیوں کے رونے کی آواز بلد ہوئی امام نے فرمایا میں چاہتا ہوں بی بیاں مسائب جد بزرگوار کو سنے ہاں ازادارہ میں امام حسین ایک مرتبہ منصور نے امام علیہ السلام کو زہر دیا امام نے ایک انگور کے اندر زہر رکھا امام نے اس انگور کو کھایا زہر نے امام کے بدن پہ اثر کیا ازادارہ نے امام حسین امام کی روح جنت کو پرواز کر گئی زہر کے اثر سے اس کے بعد غص و کفن کا انتظام ہوا امام موسیع قادم جس کا لاشا پل بغدار پہ پڑا ہوا جس کے لاشے کو چار مزدور گپے سے دے کے اٹھایا گیا 
وہ موجود تھے اپنے بابا کے دوسر و کفر و تدفین کا انتظام کیا بڑی شان و شوقت سے امام کا جنازہ اٹھایا گیا میں کہوں گا یا امام موسیٰ قاظم آپ خوش بس ہیں آپ اپنے بابا کا جنازہ اٹھا رہے ہیں آئیے کربلا میں چوتے امام ہیں ہاتھوں میں ہتھگلیاں ہیں پاؤں میں بیلیاں ہیں گلے میں توقع خاندار ہیں بابا کے سرنوں کے دن Yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, I'm saying.